So we finished up the chapter on simple objects and we're beginning a new chapter which is known as vectors. And one thing that I wanted to show you in our studio was if you ever want to clear a window, for example, there's all this uh, startup uh, script here with it and if you want to get rid of all that or if you want to just completely clear the window out of the work you're doing, there's a little broom up top here and when you click on that broom, you'll get your uh, prompt up in the upper left. So the chapter that we're beginning here is chapter four, and the topic here is vectors. This is one of the most important chapters that we'll have because vectors show up all over uh, R, and in fact R is a vector-based language. You can create a vector in one of four manners, and here are the four ways that you can create a vector. The first way to create a vector is with the colon operator, and that's probably the easiest way. The second way to create a vector is with the C function, and that can be thought of as uh, combine or concatenate. And the third way to create a vector is with the sequence function, SEQ. And finally, the last way to create a vector is with the REP function, and that's short for repeat. So if you ever want to repeat something, uh, that's the way that's done. Now before we start in on vectors and the first way to create a vector, let me mention a little bit about choosing object names. You want to do these in a me meaningful fashion. And whether it's a simple object or if it's a vector, you always want to choose something that is meaningful. There seem to be three different styles for choosing object names that have multiple words to them. And let me give you those three different ways. The first is called camel case. And so, for example, if you were doing cash on hand, this might be one way of setting your cash on hand to $243. And notice that shows up here in the upper right as well. The other way is with dots. Sometimes people like to write this as cash.on.hand. And if you do it that way, you can set it equal to $243. And now, of course, that's a different variable name than the first one. And then the other way it is done typically is with underscores. So cash underscore on underscore hand, set equal to 243, and that's a third way of doing it. Any of those three different ways are legit. It's just a matter of personal style. And on the one that uses what is known as the camel case, which is right here, some people will have that as a lowercase c out front. Either way is fine. So we're going to go to vectors right now. And so the first technique I have is technique one is using the colon operator to create a vector. So let's start out with this first vector, one colon 10. And when you do that, you can see I have now created a vector of the first 10 positive integers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And uh, very soon you will see the uh, reason for this uh, 1 here, but we'll do that in a subsequent example. Now you can have anything as a lower bound. So for example, I could go from negative 7 up to 13. And here are those values. It's a vector that runs from negative 7 up to 13. When you use the colon operator, the increment is either going to be a positive one, as it is in this case, or if you go in the other direction, and let's say we go from, go from 10 down to negative 2, in that case the increment will be negative 1. But it's always going to be a gap between the values of 1. Now here's another one. If I go 1 colon 100, what you're going to see here is that we now have a much bigger vector, and in fact it can't all fit on one line as it did in the previous examples. 
The reason for these numbers in the brackets out here is the 19 says that this element that occurs right here is the 19th element of the vector. This 55 tells you that this is the 55th element of the vector, etc. So for example, if I created the vector 101 through 200, you would now see that the first element of the vector is 101, the 19th element of that vector is 119, etc. 73rd element of the vector is 173. One last thing, and that is you can set objects to vectors. For example, if I say x is equal to 1 colon 100, now I have set the vector x to 1 to 100. If you look over here in the upper right for the environment, we have our three cash on hands here. But now we have a vector x which is different. Instead of just being holding one value, like 243, it now holds 100 values. And those are the integers 1 through 100. Now it's not going to display all of them. It'll display the first 10 or so and then give you a dot, dot, dot. If I were to type x at the prompt here, I would get the contents of the vector x. Now here is one that might come up. Let's say I want to go from 3.7 up to 8. It's not clear what will happen here, but you'll find out when I hit the return key. It will start at 3.7 as requested. The increment will be 1, so it'll go 3.7, 4.7, 5.7, 6.7, 7.7, but it will not end with 8. It will keep its spacing to be 1 between each of the values, and the 8.7 won't get placed in the vector because um, it is greater than 8. So that's one case where you can actually put in uh, floating point values into a vector. Well, that was technique one for creating a vector. And now we're going to go to technique two, and that's using the C function. So here's the way that's done. If I have numbers which don't differ by 1, let's say we've got 2 and then a negative 4 and then a uh, 5 and a 0. I think we've got everything we need there. If this, this is typically the way data looks. Data are typically not going to be separated by 1. So here we have created a vector of length 4 and the elements of that vector are 2, negative 4, 5, and 0. I can also set x to that vector, and I'll do an up arrow here, and use the non-destructive space, which is the left arrow, and I can say x is equal to that vector. Now notice, before this, x was the, ve the vector which consists of the numbers 1 through 100. I'm now overwriting x, and now you have 2, negative 4, 5, and 0. So you can't get the values that I had in that object back. They have been overwritten, and the 1 through 100 are gone for good. Here's another vector. y is equal to 1 na 0 negative 4. So you can see that shows up over here, 1 na 0 and negative 4. And if I were to type x here and y here, you can see the contents of those two vectors. Both of them are of length 4, but the vector y has a capital N, capital A as its second element. The meaning to NA is that is short for not available. The language R works with data quite a bit, and when a data value is missing, that is the way that R sees it as a missing data value. And NA with both N and A uppercase is how you handle a missing data value. 
Now these two techniques can be combined. Let's look at the uh, two vectors x and y. I can say z is equal to, and I can combine, I can put x first, and then I can put y, and then for example I could put a vector um, put together with the colon operator, 5 colon 3, and here's what I'll have for z. What I'll have is the first four elements correspond to the values of x. The next four elements correspond to the values of y. And then finally, these last three elements correspond to 5, 4, and 3 using the colon operator. So here we have a vector of length 4 plus 4 plus 3, which is a vector of length 11, which is put together using the two techniques. So that takes care of the second technique. And we will now move to the third technique for forming a vector. So this is technique three. And using the sequence function. And the sequence function has the following syntax. syntax. It starts with SEQ. And the first parameter is from. And that's where the vector starts. And then there is a 2, which is where the vector ends. And the default for that is 1. And then there are other parameters which I will show you, or other arguments which I will show you as we proceed with a couple examples. So this is using the SEQ function. So let's start out with this vector. We want to go sequence from 2 up to 30. And there is a by parameter, and we want to say we want to do this by steps of 2. So when you type that in, it will go from 2 to 30. And instead of steps of 1, which is the default for the colon operator, in this case, the uh, steps will be of length 2. And you can see it's even numbers from 2 up to 30. Here's another way of doing this. Sequence from 2 to 40, but let's say we want the length of this to be, say, 10. Well, in this case, it will create a vector of length 10. And you can see it started from 2 and went up to 40. And all of the steps between each of these values is the same. So if you wanted another vector using this same sequence command, if you instead said that the difference will be 11, you can see the numbers have worked out a little bit nicer this way. So if you want a sequence from 2 to 40, and you want your length to be 10, then it will work out in this fashion. If you want the length to be 11, then the increment between each of these, as you can see, is 3.8. And all of those calculations will be done internally by R. You can also put in a negative value for your, uh, for your uh, sequence function. And so, for example, if you want to go from 20 down to 1 and you want your step to be minus 3, that's done in this fashion. And notice that in this case, we started at 20, and each value is 3 less than the one before it, but we never made it down to 1. It will end at 2. And the next one down, of course, would be negative 1. And since that is less than 1, it just stops. So there is the uh, sequence function. And there is only one left. And this is the fourth technique. And here it is, technique 4 for creating a vector. This is the repeat function. And its syntax is going to be REP. And then you will have the object that you are repeating, which is x, and the number of times you want it repeated, and then some other arguments for the repeat function. So let's start out with a simple case. Let's say we want to repeat the object 5, which is a vector of length 1. 
and we want to repeat that four times. When that is done, the five will get repeated four times. Here's another example. Let's say we want to repeat the vector, which goes from 7 to 11, and we want to repeat that three times. Well, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 is right here, and that vector of length 5 you can see is getting repeated three times here in the output. So that's a 15 element vector and it is 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 repeated three times. Let's, let's nest two of these together. Here is repeat and we could say I want a sequence that goes from 1 to 5 by equals 2 and I want to repeat that four times. So in this case the 135 that's created by the SEQ function will get repeated four different times and so you have a vector of length 12 that you're creating there. Here's another one. This time what we're going to do is we're going to nest the C function within the repeat command and let's say I want to repeat C1, 5. So there's simply the vector that consists of two numbers, 1 and 5. And I want to repeat that 2 and 4 different times. So what's going to happen here is the 1 will get repeated twice and the 5 will get repeated four times. This will give you a few examples of how you can use the repeat function and the sequence function and the C function and the colon operator and you will mix and match these together um, to get various uh, vectors and at this point it's a good time to uh, probably uh, get into our studio or into R, whichever one you have uh, on your laptop and experiment with these four techniques and get very good at them because we're going to be using these quite often.